Welcome to Forever Exile, the Path of Exile podcast. I am Tags, aka Justin. And I'm Tyler Wrecker of Days. Welcome to episode 19. Woo! That's almost yep. triple digits. Yeah, we're so close. Yeah, one episode so, away so from triple digits. Yeah, so episode 19, what a weird time right yeah. now. Yeah, it's a little bizarre. So obviously there's a, a with COVID-19 affecting everybody right now. So we're we're doing our part, staying hidden in our homes and trying to limit the spread as much as we can, obviously. Thankfully, we always do this remotely, so we never have to be in the same room. <laughs> yeah, Justin's B.O., I tell you, that is nasty yeah. business. It's just terrible. So how's your week been? How's I guess things obviously have been different, but how's how's we how's the week been for you guys? Uh, it's been good. It's been good. It's a little bit different. You know, we have to grocery shop almost every day because the stores are so empty. You have to keep going back to see if they've restocked and what you needed. And people are terrified to be in public. So, you know, you're walking down the grocery aisle and people are like pinned against the wall trying to move past you because mm -hmm. they think you got it. And, uh, but you got to be careful and it's odd, you know, you're like, okay, should I touch my phone or my car keys after I've touched my debit card and the machine? Then, you know, all of a sudden I actually care that my wife has hand sanitizer in the car, you know? I know so it's weird, eh? It's, uh, it's, it's a different time. You get used mm -hmm. to it. I mean, today did tons of housework outside cause it was a beautiful day finally. And the uh, cold's finally gone from winter where we live anyway. Yep. So it was good. How about you? Your week? I mean, COVID's obviously, I mean, we're hermits. We always kind of were, you know, but now nobody can make fun of us for it. So. Yeah, it's, a, it's had a huge impact. Uh, I mean, especially from a work standpoint, our, we've got all of our offices now working from home, which has mm. been great. And we were yep. nice to be set up that way and all of our staff are able to continue working. So yeah. we're super lucky in, in that sense. Um, but yeah, very, very different. It, yeah. It's crazy how fast it went too. I mean, you look back just on, on our podcast side, yeah, I think it was just two episodes ago, we were kind of... Where I accidentally I, called it neat. Where you called, uh, <laughs> accidentally twice. Well, that's habit. Neat is habit. <laughs> awesome. I'll say neat a lot today too. Yeah. Uh, no, it's crazy how fast it changed though. It really, really changed very, very quickly. So. Well, we're, uh, we're in Canada. For those of you, I mean, we have an international audience. So for those in Europe, don't, don't find us naive. I mean, we, we get what our, our broad, or what is it? Our, our media tells us and that kind of thing. So our country not necessarily was behind, but it spread to us a lot later than it would have been in Europe mm -hmm. or in Asia. So yeah, I feel like so far Canada has been doing a reasonable job of trying to, trying to slow that spread. I, I feel like in our area, for sure. Uh, I think wow. in, in our area, it's been very, very, people have been very good about trying to just socially distance themselves. And uh, again, from, for us, I mean, if I didn't have kids, God, this would be amazing. <laughs> right oh, i would play path of xl so i mean i've had all the, day yeah i've had the benefit of playing it certainly more than i did last league i don't think that that's a whole lot to do with covid19 because i've also worked way more in this last week than i feel like i have in quite a while just because it's so different now mm -hmm. but man i was not married and didn't have kids i would be crushing this game right now mm -hmm. yeah so mm -hmm. it's kind of a nice excuse for people and it's a good league it, it it's a, is. a really good league. I feel like it it's uh, going to have some, I don't know about the retention, but I feel like right now there's some forced retention because even yeah. if you didn't like it, it's better than going outside and getting sick. Yeah. Well, they need to get their stability stuff. There's still a lot of um, freezing and really low frame rate drops on occasion when when the league mechanics hit in. So some people have been, yeah, like, I know on some my people guides, have some been, really big problems. Yeah. yeah I've had I some haven't. people on my guides really just, they're like, I'm out. You know, wow, it's that bad, eh? They'll like they'll, they'll they're saying like I'll I'm paying attention to when they fix it, but I'm out until then. There's just yeah, been and it's, and it's hardware specific. They were saying like there's just I certain that, pieces yeah. of hardware that aren't compatible with some things, and GGG has like all their crap PCs and all mix and matches. They they have I think they said three or four PCs that just have weird setup. We're well, not weird setups, just in case you have one of these setups, but setups that they didn't they don't have in the office to try and test out to see which type of video cards or processors have, have issues with the game. And we'll get into the, some of the stuff that happened this week in POE, but I thought that there was something in there about them thinking that maybe they had found some stuff and fixed some stuff with regards to performance. Again, it's, it's hard because yet. I have, uh, it was written in E I thought, oh, I know there was still more to come, but, okay. uh, I didn't, I haven't had really any of the issues I did in the very beginning, Yeah, but I haven't had any issues very much this league with regards to it being hmm. laggy or freezing or anything like that. I've well, had I've other had, issues. 
but not that. <laughs> I've had very little time to play. For some reason, I don't know why, but I thought that spring break would mean spring break for me in POE <laughs> land. And I don't know where I missed the boat. It's not my first spring break, but I've had zero time to play. So uh, it's quite funny. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So I sent you this link I saw. the other day. <laughs> and. I have to just bring this up. I realize it's a Path of Exile podcast, but Path of Exile is a game. And so this is why I feel like this is relevant, especially the given situation in our in our world right now. So you saw the link that GameStop. So GameStop is American and they own EB Games, which is the version of GameStop in Canada. Yep. I don't know if this pertains to EB Games. I'm just this is their blanket company. The the main yep. mother company is is whatever GameStop is controls GameStop and EB Games. They decided that they were an essential retail service and have said that they should not be shut down if any companies and businesses are forced to shut down in order to try and save lives. Uh, They think they're essential. And I was absolutely floored when I read the article. It's it's insane. How like I love video games, but how is a, a one out of many methods to distract yourself while you're on home lockdown essential? That would well, mean like a bookstore is an essential service. And 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 uh, GameStop or EB Games, give me a break. You yeah. are you're not essential even when everybody's healthy and fine. Like yeah. you can go to Steam, you can go to all these other places <laughs> to buy games. I feel yeah. like GameStop and EB Games is fading out. In fact, if you go into any of those stores, you're buying like stupid It's, it's toys. It's not games, you're buying yeah, oh, toys. Yeah. It's full of toys. Yep. I just this okay, so you used to work for EB Games for a little bit. I did. And this is exactly what I remember stories of the oh. EB games and GameStop sort of what their back end runs like where they just, they are, they're, they're just clueless. Like they're absolutely clueless. They were the worst company I've ever worked for and not in a bad way, but as I was growing up, I'd have a summer job here. I'd have a winter job there. And so I've had a lot of jobs as I was going through and just going through school and I worked for EB Games for, what was it, like three years, four years? And I'd worked at Electronic Arts before that, which was a horrendous company to work for at the time. And EB Games was just such um, a selfish company. They didn't care about their employees. They cared even less about their clients or their customers. And this, honestly, if I was working there, if I got that email when I was working at EB Games, this wouldn't surprise me at all. I would have walked out. But I, there's no way I would like, you know what they're asking people to do? They're asking their employees when an officer of the law comes up, whatever officer it is that whatever, you know, state they're in comes up to them and says, you have to close down. They were told to give them a brochure. Did you read it? Yeah. A very generic. <laughs> Thank so you dumb. for everything you're doing. Please yep. call this one eight hundred number to our main office. Yeah. And they are supposed to refuse law enforcement to stay. That's open. what your minimum wage employee is supposed to do. Are you kidding? You're me? just dicks. Like they're just straight up dicks. I saw a great oh. response from somebody who said that they were going to continue uh, with what EB games or GameStop was asking them to do because uh, what's that game? Some game for Nintendo just came out. My kids just got it too. Um, it's an Island animals, animal crossing. Yeah. yeah. Um, the person said, I'm waiting until my animal crossing comes out and then I'm picking it up and dropping off my keys. Like they're, they're done. And I just thought I, I, I don't feel like I'm, we're often like disparaging against much, but they are a trash company. Like the fact that they did this to their, their employees is just, yep. I have no issue with the permanent boycott for them, considering how easy it is to get anything video game related without that company. And here's the thing. We're path of exile lovers. And I Mm -hmm. always wish every time I walk into a video game store or even seven 11, I want to see those EB games like you know there's Steam Cash, there's Xbox Cash, there's Amazon.ca Cash or sure. .com Cash wherever you're from .com .br .com Cash. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but I'm saying like you know there's those cash cards that you can buy, right? The little scan things, and then you add it to your account. You get them from everywhere. I've always mm-hmm. wanted Poe to be more out there. I want to buy Po. I know that this is new for them. They're considering putting their merchandise way out there. But I always want every time I walk into an EB Games, I wish I'd be like, yeah, here's 10 bucks. I'll get some Poe currency. And then I just add it to my account. I'd always want that. So mm. since they don't even have that, I'm done. Yeah. I mean, we go into it every time just because my kids like to go through there because it's video games. And really, mm-hmm. I mean, I remember that as a kid going into a video game store. It is fun. 
but literally everything we see, I'm like, I'll just order this online yeah. or we can grab it on steam. And I do like to, to, uh, support local, but not for this. Nope. Like, Never. uh, our groceries and our food. I love to support local, but for video games and for this company, I love a lot of their staff, but this company is just garbage. Yeah. There are oh. people that work for them. They are really cool. Like a lot of the, the, the kids and the, the younger people that are working in there. It's a cool we, job to have. They're just company they work for, unfortunately, is trash. We hang out with two people that we used that I used yeah. to work with there that are awesome, awesome mm-hmm. people. Awesome people. Yeah. But just a just a trashy company. Oh, amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Or no, so, just amen. No hallelujah. That, but that's it for GameStop, but garbage. Tell us about your uh let's hear about your build this week because this <laughs> is hilarious. Because because you're doing better than I am. Uh, yeah. let, let, let me start with this. Are you still leveling? Well, everybody's leveling, right? Are you I've still in campaign leveling? Oh God, no. no! Like you just got out of campaign yesterday? Nope. This was <laughs> this was a this league. So I uh, I've been doing essence strain contagion. Uh-huh. Uh huh. It didn't actually start off super great. I, I got through it really well, but I haven't played it in quite a long time. And the private league we're playing. Okay, first off, I love the private league because it's like a just slightly bigger version of SSF. And yep. we have a very cool group of people who are playing in it. Agreed. We're quite active. We've got like a decent trade system going. And uh, it's not even trade. Who, it's just a generous system. It's fantastic. Yeah. So it's, and it's been good for a lot of the players and we've, yeah, so everybody that's been in there has been awesome, but I haven't done essence strain contagion for quite a few leagues. And so my setup took me a bit. My, I literally had to rebuild my whole tree. I think I spent like 30 regrets plus the 18 points that I had gotten through just whatever hmm. uh, and just redid my tree. I just, it just wasn't set up properly, which made a huge difference for me. And then one of the guys in the league cuddles found a staff that I had wanted, which made a huge, it just, it took it to a whole new level. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, no, the build wise is going great now. Now I'm at Good. least getting into it, starting to deal with Cyrus and all the end game stuff. But I like it. I like Delirium. I am really happy about the patch we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. And some of the manifesto stuff, because delirium for me in the beginning, I think we talked about it last, uh, last episode was really rough, Hmm. too much like garbage, like on death or yeah, on death explosions and stuff, just taking damage from stuff. You had no clue what was happening. You were dying in an instant and there was no, you know, not that you didn't have any idea as to why you had just died. Which yep. I get that that's a big part of Path of Exile, but most of the time I can still figure out like, yep. here's what I did wrong. Well, there's a bit of in trial and things, error I that was you like, can deal with. Mm, I don't have a clue what I just did besides starting that delirium, which I maybe just should have ended. But um, yeah, I yeah, my build's been going great. I'm pretty excited now to start pushing it a bit further. Awesome. How's yours? <laughs> <laughs> so first, tell us what your build is. So. Have you gotten to a point yet where you can actually say what your build is? Like, are you far enough along that you're not like, well, I'm a witch. Uh, <laughs> I've ascended <laughs> once. Thank you. All right. There we go. I'm in the mid 40s. Um, I've um, made some very poor decisions, but going CI at level Learn 14 lessons. was not the issue. Um, but I did forget <laughs> of my. Oh, hush. Yes, I did. Was. You, you. You, you easy. You don't even watch my broadcast. You I did watch, watch you after the last episode. I asked you if you were going to play. Yeah. And it was and great. I watched you. Ah. It was great. But let me tell you why my slash deaths is over 300 in oh. Act 7. <laughs> oh so. And you're going to tell me it's not CI? Part. Yeah. Part of the. <laughs> Okay. Problem with concussion stuff. I'm going to blame it on my concussions. It's oh memory stuff, okay. right? Memory. Now, I've forgotten a lot of my own advice that I give other people in my guides. And so that really hurt me. Um, let, let me click. Specifically Because what? I'm obviously not remembering, which is why I wrote it down. So when you go CI early, one of the big issues that new people have when they're leveling is whether they're going to choose to have the proper socket colors and links, but really crappy gear. So they see all their gems working in cohesion, but they have crappy gear or you, you only have a few of your skills working, Mm -hmm. but you have, you've been picking up better gear and you've been focusing on gear and mods and resists and life and that kind of stuff. So, um, 
Going CI early and not caring about your mods isn't a good way to live or go quickly. And I forgot that until my death count was really high. Uh, in the what level was it where it's just all lightning? Act 3, I think it is, when it's piety and then dominus. It's just sure. all lightning. And I had negative 14 resist in lightning. So I, I'd look at lightning and I was Do you I know how dead. impressive it is to be negative 14 in normal? Like where resists it's, haven't even kicked up yet it's <laughs> almost like i tried so then after i beat kativa well let me tell you there are oh, other yeah i know there's another pure lightning level anyway so anyway so there'd be fights where i'm going in and i'm just like lay my vortex dead lay my vortex dead lay my vortex and so you know it, it takes some time um i also uh i changed my tree a bit from the tree that i was really familiar with that i had for a past few leagues for this build oh i didn't even say what my build is Nope. I'm I'm an occultist, barely, and I'm CI, which means chaos inoculation, which means energy shield is my only life, and my main skill is vortex. I have unlocked vortex since the previous episode, yep, and so I'm no longer using minions. Mm -hmm. And so uh, with this new tree, um, I'm trying a method. I wanted to see if vortex as a four link would do enough damage. If I wasn't really focusing on it, I went for mana reservation nodes and more energy shield yep. it's not doing a lot of damage so having no survivability mods and no damage really doesn't help battles go very well and it took me as usual as the tyler curse goes uh it took me forever to get a bleed flask forever to Which i you know how i did it i ran much. out of alterations and mm -hmm. i didn't get it I might have skipped it accidentally, but I didn't get it. And I actually had to wait until I've unlocked enough beasts to craft it with Einhart. It wouldn't have mattered as much, though, had you not gone CI. You'd still be benefiting from it, but CI is like really, really needs it. Except I have zero life mods with any of the tree nodes that like I've it selected. Would be better. I still think it would have been better. So anyway, it's been a rough go, but my fault, but not because I went CI at 14. Okay. So here's my just input. Don't care. Um, CI at 14. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hang on, okay, go so on, CI, go on. CI at 14, I'm just going to go with, uh, was a contributing factor. We'll just go with that. Maybe it wasn't all of it but it was a it was a really 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 big part of it let's go really but, small part of it you know <laughs> so but you always you always focus on links like you've always been that always that way i think it makes it a hundred times worse when it's ci agreed but i also think for the normal newer player maybe not understanding exactly how the game works you're probably no you are much better off going for the gear making sure your life and resists are up there and then trying to add the, the links as you go. I mean, you are going to hit, you are going to hit a bit of a wall with damage. It does become hard, but that being said, if you're playing a spell, it's a lot easier to scale it than it is. If you were to be playing, say an attack build, like it, it's, it's much harder with an attack build. Cause you're having to try to ramp up your damage yeah. quite a bit. It's quite a bit more difficult. You're more dependent for, on a weapon for yeah, sure. For your spell. Uh, I mean, you, it's you not a range <laughs> spell. It's, it's it's vortex so it's Which just it, a circle around me i have to go right in the middle of enemies with no survivability <laughs> with, or with like a white gear because it's got four links and with ci my 15 i have 1500 energy shield and that means nothing, nothing. without resists oh yeah so, for sure resists are like key so for anyone who's listening don't do what tyler did <laughs> <laughs> well no, no, he's right. I can't think we no, can be pretty safe right. about that. Yep, yep. He's, Unless you, I mean, there's some, sometimes maybe you just want to like torture yourself a little bit, or maybe it's like a self challenge. Like how yep. hard can I make the start of this league? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's what you're going for. What I'm doing is I'm really taking advantage of the timeline of the private league. That's what I'm doing. I'm experiencing <laughs> the campaign in its fullest. And by the time I finally reach end game, the private league will be done. I think, I think Cuddles is leveled like two or three. <laughs> three yeah. I think he's passed me eight game. times. I think everybody has. <laughs> So yeah, I, it, it's been so your deaths is sorry how many? Uh, it's it's over three hundred. I don't wow. think I've ever even had triple digits by the end of campaign playing with my eyes closed. So this we, has been a rough go. I think we talked about deaths last episode too because when I finished the campaign, it was the highest, and, and mm -hmm. it was almost all because of delirium. They were 
probably over 90% of them were due to delirium just because it was very, very, I found it very difficult. I think it's because you don't know how to level. Well, I, maybe, but. See, I'm, kinda, I'm sucking by choice. I think you just don't know what you're doing. But at least I'm at the end game. <laughs> I, I am looking forward <laughs> to playing with you eventually. I have links and resists. Wow. You must be really good. I know. I practice, Ty. I practice. <laughs> so my poor wife, though, like I'm I'm going through and I'm, you know, like I love POE and I because of guides and stuff, I enjoy it enough that it it's what I use my personal time with writing guides and stuff like that and mm-hmm. and filters, all oh, filters. Oh, and oh, it's coming. It's coming for yeah, you. Three pe- for yeah. For you filter lovers. Woo. And so. Anyway, I I try it and share my excitement with this game with my wife, and she would oh. probably absolutely love this game. But she's into if other games you, and other pastimes or... as well. Yeah, I think she would. I think she would. But but she's not like she doesn't play it. And I try and show her how hard of a decision I'm choosing between. You know, like oh, should I do this item or this item? And I'm trying to explain how amazing both of these items are. And you're trying to explain it to somebody who doesn't play POE, my poor wife. She's <laughs> she's one of those people where it's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She's got this look on her face like, you know, I just want to get back to doing up? what I'm doing. But I'm, uh, yeah, I'm super interested. Yeah, you bet. And so there was, you know how I'm really into Dark Souls as well. When I was really into the first game, when only the first Dark Souls was out, I'd be fast traveling and I'd be going back to Andre the Blacksmith, you know, near the cathedral. and. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my, my wife and I have this inside joke where I'd be sitting there thinking about where to spend my attribute points, my my stats or what weapon to do or how I'm going to upgrade this weapon. And so I'd literally be there for an hour on my phone trying to figure this out. And in the background, you'd have Andre just going, he's a blacksmith yeah, going ding, mm-hmm. ding, ding, yep. ding. And it was nonstop. And I have rain in my hideout in Path of Exile. So when I'm trying to make choices or I'm going through my gear and I'm trying to figure out what to do, the the rain in my path of exile hideout is exactly the same to her as as, yeah, it's just as annoying, just as irritating. Ding, ding. The second she sees me, like if I'm it doesn't matter what game I'm playing, if I'm playing a game, she'll hang out, you know, she'll be doing what she does uh, on, on the on the couch next to me, whether it's reading or on her tablet or whatever. And she'll be listening to whatever we play. The second I load Path of Exile, earbuds go in. She's listening to her book or <laughs> podcast or something like that. Not ours. And uh, yeah, there's like funny. nothing really, though, for a third party to listen to as somebody plays Path of Exile. Well, Especially sure. If you're not there's into like, it. I'm all out of mana or whatever it is. Those are great. You're just hearing like random noises of yeah. items dropping. I feel like it's not a fair representation of the game if you're the one showing it to her. <laughs> 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 so i don't know if we're early enough that she hasn't turned it off yet but if you're listening maybe come over sometime and i'll, I'll show you how path <laughs> it's it's meant to be played okay that's that's yeah. slightly dirty so she <laughs> was thinking of starting a support group for spouses of people that like path of exile right so like all yeah. the other spouses of people that like poe all these spouses that have to tolerate all these amazing look how big the skill tree is look at all these decisions oh look how many the mercy is i six That's link awesome. something so she wants to start a support group i think you and i should support this support group but then secretly over time slowly start trickling in things about how poe is good and we'll slowly somehow start to make them like poe the only thing that I would love to do if that ever actually became a thing is plant a microphone so that we could hear them talking about like the POE tree. Now they might be talking about it in a negative way, but it would be awesome because they'd be oh, like, yeah. oh my God, he was talking about like this cluster jewel. And this and- <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't even care that it was negative. I'd be like, oh, they're right. That was a, that was a good cluster jewel. <laughs> uh, it would be awesome. It would be awesome. So anyway, we should support it in, I'm in. with completely horrible motivation, but we should support it. All right. So let's chat about this week in P- POE. It was, uh, there was a lot. Mm-hmm. So there were, there were two main things. We had the manifesto that came out earlier in the week, which was awesome. We'll chat about that first. And then just today, uh, 3.10 E N E hotfix or whatever came out. And uh, I really like both. 
So do you want to start with the manifesto? Let's, what do yeah. you think of it? I honestly, I think it's great. Uh, personally, just the fact that they do manifestos often or, you know, whenever they do them, I think is amazing. Um, they've what had, do you like about the manifesto? The fact that you're getting sort of an insight into what they're thinking or what they're yeah, sort of hoping to do? Definitely. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've played different games where I wish they did this and I wish they did that. And there's probably a really good reason that they have it the way it is. And I don't see it. But as a, as as the customer, it's nice to know why they made one decision over the other. I, I love their dev manifestos. Whether I like what they're saying or not is irrelevant. I think the fact that you know they've thought of this and this and this and this and they're aware of this, but they're waiting for this. I I like what else is there to complain about? Nothing. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, look at some of the stuff they've done in the past. You and I have not necessarily criticized, but we've been surprised at some of the decisions they've made about being walked on or changing things just because there was a big, you know, wham, wham, wham party sure. on Reddit. And it's nice when what was it? The dev manifesto or the patch notes? I think it was the dev manifesto dev. Mm -hmm. where they said. Uh, we're not changing it. And these are the reasons, sorry, you know, and so, but all those reasons were really good. Yeah. So they, their, their manifesto from my point of view, uh, touched on a lot of the stuff I had complained about in mm -hmm. the last episode, which I was really happy to see. And the fact that for the most part, for a lot of them, they were like, yeah, we do need to make some adjustments. I, just before we actually get into the manifesto, the one thing that really frustrates me though, with the community, like I love the POE community. I think in general, they're very positive and they can be really good. I, I get really frustrated when the, the league's been out one or two weeks and people, all they focus on is like here, we had the same thing in the last league too. And we talked about the fact that me and you were, because last league we had very little time in the beginning. It was quite funny to us because we didn't even have a chance to experience yeah. the stuff that everybody was bitching about. By the time we got to it, they had made it better and things were fine and whatever, everybody moved on. Uh, in this one, I'm, I feel like I'm a little bit more up to date with where, a lot of people are. I'm, I've sort of experienced it a little bit earlier than before. And I get it. Stuff was overtuned. Stuff was a little bit frustrating. But I absolutely hate the people that go online and just want to flat out cry because they're not getting it the way that they want. Threatening to not play, which, oh, my God, knock yourself out. That is the biggest baby yeah. excuse ever. Oh like, I'm goodness. taking Help the community and play a different game. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. And so uh, th I just wanted to just to say that beforehand, because I really liked and appreciated their manifesto. I do agree with you. It's a little frustrating sometimes to feel like they get beat on. And so sometimes maybe they make some concessions because there are enough people crying about it. But this is not a league to be crying about. It really isn't. Yes, there was some stuff that was overtuned and difficult, but it would it had no effect on your gameplay. I it Okay, if you're playing hardcore, this really was rough, but just don't do the delirium. Well, you know that they're going to have to patch things. They're going to have to adjust mm -hmm. things. Just don't do it. Yeah. Like, and don't run through that freaking delirium. Yeah. And they've come out many times. Granted, it's not like on an official POE channel. They don't have a POE broadcast, but they've come out many times. If you keep up to date on the dev interviews that they do through the variety of different, uh, a variety of different media that they don't make their decisions based on hard, hardcore. They mm -hmm. have a hardcore league because it's wanted. But none of the gameplay, none of the decisions they make, none of the mechanics have any thought towards hardcore. Yep. Well, I mean, they think about it, but it's not something that they revolve around. Oh, well, the hardcore players are going to deal with this. Like it's they have their warning right up there like this, you know, like you're at the mercy of the game and stability. You know what I mean? So it's uh, one of those yep. things where I really wish that people would understand when they're complaining on, I don't know. I, how, how do you word it? It's, I hate, I agree with you. I hate, I'm, I don't feel like a superstar. So you have to change this. Yeah. And I, and I, things are supposed to be hard. Like, yeah. I, so there are some stuff. And like I said, we're going to really, I know we're kind of deviating a little bit, but I think it's necessary. Some of the stuff in this manifesto that they changed was a hundred percent necessary. Stuff was overtuned. Stuff was very, very difficult in the sense that you didn't know why you were dying. And that to me is not the way that path of exiles meant whether it's hardcore or softcore it's just much more mm -hmm. that the the effect is much worse in a hardcore situation because you just you got to start over mm -hmm. uh, you also chose to play a hardcore character in a brand new league with a brand new league mechanic that can quite often take a couple weeks before it's tuned a little bit safer to play in yeah. but regardless I, I like that they made some changes there was stuff that i had mentioned in the last episode that i found frustrating but i 
I would never take what I felt and go like, I'm going to go onto Reddit and I'm going to type this up in a way that's super negative towards a game that's really good, but as one part that I don't like, and then hope that I can get enough people behind it so that they go. Yeah. I, and, and in general, I think they are relatively good at that. But with regards to the changes that they made, all of them, which I thought were awesome. One of the things I mentioned in the last episode, and I just brought it up here too again, was the on death effects. I re- it was really frustrating yep. that they were so hard. But it was it was one section of the dev manifesto. I'm just going to quickly read a little bit of it just to show because it, it I found it really hard. It was really frustrating. I definitely died to it quite a lot while leveling because you just couldn't see it. You didn't know what was happening at least three hundred so times. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't quite that high, but. Mm. Uh, so currently there's a random chance for individual delirium monsters to have mods that cause on death effects. We're internally experimenting with moving these to pack base. So there, there's a more variance in when you encounter them, rebalancing them around this and improving what, how they're signaled. That to me was great because that meant that, okay, at least maybe I'll be able to see it and it won't be as often because it was a lot. But there's a paragraph after this part that really stood out to me. And it was probably my favorite paragraph in all of their manifesto. And what they said was, for those interested in why we use on-death effects and content like this, it's because they are a viable way of making monsters that are killed instantly have an effect on players and they aren't trivialized by clear speed. Few to no other mods we can put on these monsters make any difference normally because they're eradicated by powerful builds in seconds. We're going to be toning these down either way. The reason I liked that was because that was them saying, look, we hear that you're bitching. And that you don't like it. And I'm even talking to myself. I was bitching about it. Yep. But here's why we do it. And we aren't going to change it. And I actually really appreciated the fact that they were yep. straight up about that. And it makes sense when I read it. Yeah. Like, okay, I get it. I, am, I at least appreciate that they're going to make some adjustments. They're going to make it a little bit more obvious. Which for me is all I wanted. I just wanted to know that if I don't move when I kill this mob, I'm going to take a big amount of damage. I'm fine with that. I just couldn't see. Mm-hmm it before Mm -hmm. and so this manifesto to me was awesome uh same with the item vacuuming we kind of talked about that too and i said that i get that that's not a viable option and even in that they said look we already increased can you explain what that is just for people that don't quite know what it is so if you ever do delve the idea is that as you kill mobs uh items don't drop in typical poe everywhere else as you kill a mob it can drop an item right on the floor in Delve, the game sucks up all those items, and at the end of the encounter, it just craps them all over the screen. What people were complaining about was the fact, and I kind of mentioned it too, that as the delirium spread, there's such a focus on trying to kill faster and move faster to follow the fog to get the best benefit out of it, that you weren't having time to loot the stuff that was dropping from the mobs. And I had said in our last episode too that I totally understood there's no feasible way for them to do the delve system in that because the game would explode it's way too much items wise for it to crap out at the end and they they called that out too and they said we're not doing it we increased how long you have in the delirium i actually really like that too they're like just pick it up and if you don't want to pick it up don't pick it up like we increased it purposefully so that there was time to loot if you don't have enough time then don't loot it I there's some stuff that comes up in their in their stuff that I really appreciate when they're like, no, we're not making this change. Deal with it. Yep. I don't mind that. I, especially if especially this, because it explains in very, very simple words why yep. they do it. And you can't really argue it unless you're just literally a turd. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you just want to complain. But even even if you disagree, when you see where the company's coming from, you're you know, it, it makes a lot more sense. So even if you wish that it was a different way, you would have a clear explanation as to why it's not. And it's a lot easier to settle with, you know, what totally. I mean? yep. the dev manifesto also mentioned a lot of other balance changes. They're going through all the monsters. They're making enemies that are sorry. They're going through all the monsters uh, in terms of for how much health they have and damage that they deal out. So they'll be balancing those that might be in the patch out. I actually haven't seen the patch notes, so that'll be your section. Mm-hmm. Um, they're increasing or decreasing the amount of rewards you get, depending on how deep you are into the fog. Uh, the amount of the types of debuffs that they put on you are going to be balanced out so that they do or don't last as long. Um, Cause that was actually a bit of a problem as mm-hmm. well. Yeah. Yeah. Those debuffs were lasting a little bit too long. And then here's actually one thing that I really liked. Um, I'm, I mentioned previous, and I think we are going to talk about it next is that this has been 
a very good quality of life league. And mm. it's because we mentioned, I think, in the previous podcast that because they didn't have any major content that they needed to fix, right? Like they didn't have to revamp Melee. They didn't have to redo Masters. They had a lot of time to do a lot of quality of life updates, which we mentioned previously. And as you get playing, you're like, wow, this is a lot smoother. And there's a lot of really cool little things that they've added to the game. Mm. Um, one th- So it, in, in essence, this would have been an extremely stable release now there have been some performance glitches with specific hardware that they that they're trying to fix and that's very particular but then there was this one part under performance in the dev manifesto where it says it looks like we broke something in 310 Mm -hmm. we don't know what it is yet but we're investigating and we'll fix it so i i love that kind of stuff and then they go on to say that it's high priority we're very sorry we're doing the best that we can um i i love that because it, it means that they had so much time before that it was as stable as they thought that they could make it more stable than any other release than they probably came out with. And we loved how stable Metamorph was at the beginning. And they've been building and getting better with every league. So the only reason that this isn't stable is because it has they have no clue what it is. So despite the fact that there is that issue, it's been really encouraging to see them be, I don't know, you know how I joked in the previous podcast that League is always beta, and then once it goes core, it's a solid game. They're getting a lot closer to that not being the circumstance, so I'm quite encouraged. Yeah, I and I, I'm every time you say it, I always joke that I disagree, because I, I don't think that's the case. I think that that's actually an argument that, I know you don't make it from this point of view, but I feel like that's some of the things people that are super big whiners use as an argument. Like, we're not I don't really know what their mentality is or what their hope is, but it's one of the downsides to something like Reddit. It's typically the loudest people. I mean, they're the ones posting, right? You know, it's not often oh, yeah. that you have somebody that's like, it does happen. I'm not actually taking away from the past the fact that it does, where somebody's like, look, this is actually a great league. Yeah. And yes, there's some things that they need to fix. But when did the league start? Like on the seventh? Yeah, it was beginning of the week. It was first week of the month, I think. Right, so we're like maybe weeks. two weeks in. Okay. Right, roughly sure. two weeks in. God, like give them a break. Yeah. They've made huge changes in that amount of time. Yes, some people couldn't play the game the way they wanted to play the game for a little bit. But just calm your tits. You're going to get to play it the way you want to play it. They've always done a good job of catching up and mm-hmm. figuring some stuff out. And the and only person that wouldn't know is a first time player. If this is your first league and you're experiencing performance issues, we get it. If this sure. is your second league, you know the system, right? Yep. You've been through Metamorph. If this is your third league, just be quiet. Tell them yeah. what the issues are. Sure, write up a bug report and, if you're having a problem. And then uh, with a smile. Right. Because it's not like they're like having pizza parties every day and they're working an hour and a half. Yeah. And honestly, nobody, I, I don't even know how to say it nicely. Nobody cares if you don't want to play anymore. Don't. I mean, maybe GGG does, but they shouldn't because don't. Like, you're not the type of person that I feel like should be playing Path of Exile. Uh, mm-hmm. Your opinion shouldn't be super important, so important that you should just scream and yell because one or two things doesn't work the way you want it to work. Make your bug reports, talk about the stuff that's not working, but don't be a dick about it. Yep. That's all. So 3.10.0E uh, e came out. Now, I guess you probably haven't experienced a ton of it, but I'll just really quickly... <laughs> chat about yeah, most of the stuff was that an act on seven dig are you are you dissing by 300 deaths <laughs> you're all the way to act seven what flying so uh the delirium miss has been a, uh, changed in the sense that it will actually pause now sometimes and stop during different things so you actually have a chance to do breaches or oh that's the best uh, some of the content abysses that's and it's best. based on very specific things but i like that they did that because as i read it it made me understand that they're doing it in a way that tries to make sure people can't take advantage of it. Does Where it include had, bosses? Uh, it's based on Harbinger, uh, Metamorph. There's Harb, Red yeah, Beasts, yeah, I, Essence, Paranda. I don't Jeff. think there was anything specific about bosses, if I'm remembering correctly. Mm-hmm. It was more about like the other league content stuff. Yeah, will cause the it to temporarily uh, stop from spreading. One thing that I didn't notice was if you did like. Uh, Val side areas and Alva's I didn't see that there was anything about it pausing during those and I, I, maybe I'm missing it or maybe that's something that will come later because it's one thing that I've noticed is that go, uh, man, I mean it's kind of hard I guess because in Alva it does spread but Val side areas don't so it's a little weird 
Hmm. Uh, oh, no, they did say actually when you leave the area, it does pause. As long as the whole group leaves the area, uh, there is a timer that goes on for it to pause. So, yeah, that would make sense. You could go do a Val side area and come back and still continue, which is great. Mm -hmm. uh, they changed the way that you get the rewards, which is cool. It just adds a whole increased amount of rewards now that you can get because once you fill the bar a certain amount of times you'll get a whole new section of types of rewards that you can get and it's made yeah. it a whole lot more fun yeah uh, as you're clearing through which i think was great and they've reduced all the generic rewards too so you're not which is fighting great. for a weapon yeah you're still it's still i noticed a little bit but it's at least better you it's played definitely today. better than you what played yeah, since I did. this patch yeah. Lucky. Oh, yeah. As soon as I saw this, I was like, what? I got to try some of this stuff that's out. The one you. thing that's still not there, it's making me sad, is I want my I want my um, master missions on the map device. That's still Yeah, I was wondering where those were. Yeah. I thought that maybe soon, I was sure, glitched or something. That's literally the one thing I've looked for in every patch so yeah. far. I'm like, <gasps> no. That's like my map stash, <laughs> map stash tab conversion in standard. Every time I load the game, I'm like, is it there? Is it there? I'm in a race to get this stupid Alva level, so... It's oh, not, yeah. uh, that's why I want it there. It's not going super well for me. <laughs> well, it's because uh, you spend so, your whole time decorating your spreadsheet. <laughs> that stupid spreadsheet. Uh, and then they've changed, obviously, some of the difficulty. Now, some of this I haven't uh, uh, gotten into with the simulacrum uh, changes in there. They've, they have increased how many splinters you get, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. and, then they, and then they did cut down on a ton of the damage. But my favorite part about, uh, what is this, 3.10.0 E, is there's a whole, it's a long section where they start talking about specific skills that are used by the monsters mm -hmm. and how they've been specifically changed. Yep. I started to read them and I was like, I, I don't have a freaking clue. Yeah. What any of them are. I appreciate that they're showing me the details, but I was like, what? What the vengeful bones? Oh, I love that they have swell. names. Yeah. I, I, I didn't know what any of those were. They Con even talk about like conflagrating, conflagrating, conflagrating path. Conflagrating path, yeah. Okay, and well, they talk about even well, like specific me, types books. of enemies. Yeah. I just thought that was super funny. I really skipped most of it because I didn't know what any of them were. I just was like, all right, cool. They reduce damage. That's all I care about. How do you, um, how do you say that word again? Conflagrating. Uh, it sounds really good when you say it. I'll let you say it. Conflagrating. Mm, um, that's and, and then now I haven't fought cyrus yet but i have spoken to people in our own discord and i have read on reddit and other uh forums apparently the cyrus fight was really really messed up yeah uh, i heard broken so, yeah and so it looks like they fixed that i can't say much about that because i haven't done it yet but it sounds like they've fixed all the weird teleporting that was happening and the spamming of skills and it sounds like they fixed quite a bit of that but i haven't spoken to anybody since then so i can't really speak to that specifically but this patch to me was great. They, I've gone in and done delirium since, and you know what? It's, I still find it dangerous. I have to still be careful, especially as I get deeper in. It's going to be nice once they have a depth meter that starts to show like yeah. how deep into the mist you are. Mm -hmm. But uh, the reward system seemed a little better. It was definitely less like just poof, you're dead. But it was still, if I wasn't careful and I just started sprinting through and grab, you know all these enemies if yeah. i wasn't careful you know one stun or whatever i was i was gonna feel it if i didn't die yeah so yeah the patch to me has been great i still think it's been an awesome league yeah i don't know if anything will ever compare to metamorph so like you know what i mean i, I wonder what 11 3 3 11 is going to be like because metamorph was just perfect you know what i mean and so i'm uh like i like this league i i have no complaints about the league but it's just one of those things where, I don't know, you had such a really good 3.9 that it's not, still not a metamorph, but I love the league. You know what I mean? It's not a criticism of the people that came up with it and that are working hard on it. It's just... I'm, I'm kind of in between which, which one of those two that I like better. Really? The thing that I do like about Delirium is it's just as you play it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, I, I, I just... And, man, I love the strange voice person. Yeah. Yeah. Have you okay? So you haven't gotten into maps yet, but first off, as you're going through the the quest, it's really cool because what he says is specific to the zone that you're in. Mm. So I think that if you actually listen to what he says, it's very specific. I think he starts in like Act Six or something where he starts to talk. But once you do maps, he actually makes comments mocking other bosses in the game. What? Like he makes a comment as if he's a Zaro, but he he cracks jokes at you dying. 
and um I'm trying to remember who else. he's Zana. He has like some of Zana sayings, but he oh, that's changes them. Sneaky. I, I'm looking forward to killing him. What, what that's at the yeah, end of even, Act Seven, right? I, I don't even know what it is. I have no idea what the stranger voice is. Maybe it's a thing. I haven't done any of the like simulacrum endgame stuff. I know some of the guys in our. In our oh Discord yeah, game, but... uh, somebody PM'd me telling us how to say it. Simulacrum. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sim yul ra cri yum. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> so I'll tell you what I like about guide titles. <laughs> oh, I got so many great comments about that. <laughs> I lo- that was like one of the hardest things ever to edit. Oh, and I was, man. And I really was finally like, I'm not cutting this out. I'm keeping all of it. <laughs> I showed it to my wife and she was like, wow, you guys sound ridiculous. And even she was like laughing That's at awesome. the fact that we were dying. Yeah. Well, I finally, finally, like I've been really pushing myself. I've had zero time to play and I've been really squeaking in my time. Like, you know, in the evenings, like, OK, forget it. I'm just going to ignore something important i'm going to sit down for two hours and i'm going to play some poe so i've had unfortunately zero zero time to play even my company that was supposed to come because of the covid19 they're not coming right Right. so you you think i'd have some time but um all of a sudden i got distracted and now leveling when i'm leveling i'm not thinking about leveling maybe that's the problem with my slash 314 deaths because i went on the wiki site and did you see all the new colors and shapes for the filters? Like the, all the new effects. There's an upside down house. There's a teardrop that you could have on the mini map. They have pink. They have, is it Scion or Kion? I don't even know. Goodness me. It's, it's a C. C's are silly in English. And then they have, what else? Oh, I forgot them all. Purple. Oh, man. They have an orange. I didn't see them. Oh, it's exciting. See, I just finished redoing all my filters last league. Just in time for me to completely redo them. For all the new colors and shapes. <laughs> oh, it's exciting. I don't even know what to say. This was your filter talk. I, I like how short it was. Oh, well, no, but see, now I can reference it for the rest of the podcast. So you haven't used any of the new stuff or colors yet? No, but you should see what I'm planning in my Google oh, Keep God. note. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I turned no, my I phone off know. so it wouldn't vibrate Thank during God. the podcast. But <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I got so there, now there's 11 colors and is 11 or 12 shapes and they're all for, so what i don't know do you use like i blue and pink are my favorite colors so currency and maps are my two favorite things so those will probably be blue and pink but then what should be white because maps used to be white but now they don't need to be so now what's it going to be oh my goodness and orange and yellow are they close together you're I never don't know. ever going to get to end game i'll try i don't i i don't think you'll be x8 i think that's the furthest you're going to get in this league call in it right now act eight you won't pass it I have no guarantees. But your filters will be (laughs) multicolored. Yeah. So somebody messaged me the other day and uh, gave me a suggestion. And I actually thought, oh, that's actually a really good idea of something to chat about. Because it's it's not something that super affected us. But I do see how it can affect other people. And I mean, we've talked about the multiplayer in this game and it being very meh. The game itself obviously is incredible but the multiplayer side of it is just not great there's a lot of things that conflict with each other it's just it's not the best to play with with other people that's why i'm rushing the end game because i want my curses to conflict with yours i have no curses right now if you were playing right now we'd be crushing it because i'm not playing with any curses so uh but what they talked about was the fact that guilds and poe there's really not a whole purpose to them now they they didn't specifically say this but I'm actually saying that there there really isn't like there's you have a shared stash tab, but that's literally it. Besides another area to chat, there's nothing else. And you can chat on Discord or anywhere else. And it's too bad. I'm hoping that maybe someday I definitely don't think this is going to be a, a focus for them. And I'm fine with that just because it doesn't really affect us, but it does affect other people. I wish that there was some purpose to the guilds, like that there were some weekly goals that you I mean, can you imagine? I feel like you would have a better retention if there was group activities, if there was some goal that you, you know, clear a certain amount of mobs or a certain amount of maps as a, as a team or, and, and then I I don't know what there would be out of that. It doesn't even have to be something. Just something where you could get a check Mark. Yeah. I just want a green check Mark instead of a red X and that motivates people. It's like achievements. They're totally pointless. Everybody loves them. Yeah. Well, not people love them. Yeah. But it gives you something to like do as a group. 
And uh, hopefully that that's something among the other multiplayer stuff that we would love to see come into the game at some point. Imagine uh, the I option to be able to control click into the guild stash tab. Yeah, that's instead such a weird of just drag too. and drop a mat. Like I even if it was one. just an option, like, OK, mm -hmm. I trust. I don't know. I, I don't even remember why. Do you remember why there's no I've, control? I've never seen You have thing. to drag every single item. The only thing I could think of is that it can it, it makes sure that there's no server lag, like you couldn't control click it in and have two people control click it out at the same time, like the possibility of duping an item. That's the only thing I can think of in my head, but it is frustrating. At least let me control click it in. Yeah, maybe not out, but yeah. Anyway, hopefully, hopefully guilds get some love at some point in PoE because right now they're they're a, they're just a glorified party group. Maybe, maybe PoE too. Maybe PoE too. Maybe. Hmm. So, uh, in console land, uh, mm. you still doing Wednesday. That? Oh, hush your mush. Superior. Is it? No, wait, that's superior is the proper way. I think they, uh, console 310 came out this week and it's really good. It's really good. They made a lot of quality of life features that are console specific too. Um, the, if so, if you're a console player and haven't played yet, how you go through the Atlas, like when you're in the Atlas and you're scrolling through and you're going back and forth, it's so much easier to go through with your watch stones. Now it's really nice. Uh, it's easier to go through. It's almost like a smarter analog stick. However, they end up coding that. So it was really nice. They mentioned that, uh, there's also the ability now when you're going through the game and your gems are leveling, especially as you're going through campaign and everything's leveling at once. They added the ability to just hold down. I don't know what they're called now, but like in Nintendo days, it was start and select. So you hold down the start button and it just clears all your gem levels. So they're not in the way and constantly filling up your HUD, which is nice. And for those that follow or copy filters and have their own, then they're not using the default or never syncs that show up in the list. Your followed filters now show are at the very top of your filter list instead of at the bottom. So before in 3.9, for example, I have six filters that I'm following for console for my own, and I would have to scroll through off default and then all of never Sync's filters. And then I would get to mine every single time. Now mm -hmm. my filters are right at the top. So it's awesome. They've had some pretty cool console specific changes. I'm glad they're still getting love. So that's pretty sweet. Right. Do you, do you, are you not playing on console right now? Though, I've right? turned it on to load it, see what it was like. Uh, I, am a little bit behind on my example videos. Um, two of my builds changed quite a lot, so I needed to load them up, change my gems, run through a map, try and record it, and post it. I did it for one. Even though it's an example video, I did it with like all those new gems at level one. So as I'm going through the example video, it's like incinerates level two, incinerates level three, incinerates level four. But whatever. Now I have to do it for my... Um, this sweet CI build that I'm doing right now. I have to do it for that too. But so yeah, I loaded it up. I always like seeing what it's like. And I was hoping I just leave it on during the day and hoping that I'm getting trade applications. Like people like, hey, you got a trade. Hey, you got a trade. Nobody wants my stuff. Nobody wants my stuff. I had a bone helmet, a four linked bone helmet with two white sockets. Uh, it was the max implicit at 20% minion damage and it had 75 life on it. And nobody wanted it for three chaos. I feel like that's probably because it's on console and standard. Anyway, it's like a, a double whammy. Yeah, but the best part, and if, especially if you've been listening to these from the very beginning, the best part of all of this was that map stash tab conversion for standard players was available immediately. It's awesome. We didn't have to wait a very long time at all, but I couldn't find. So whoever does that, whoever does the map stash tab conversion, Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're my favorite person at GGG. I don't think it makes up for you telling telling them that you didn't want them to have a happy Christmas. <laughs> I don't think that oh, makes up for it. Oh man, I I'm I'm glad they had a up. great Christmas, and I'm glad they had such a restful Christmas that they were able to yeah, put now. out the map stash tab conversion out immediately for three ten. Um, uh -huh. But I couldn't find. Maybe it's still there. Maybe it's not there. But I couldn't find where they have the option to have random portals enabled. Are you using that on PC? Yeah, I am all three of them. So when I oh, loaded yeah, Melagaro, which was a horrible area for my build, when I loaded Melagaro, <laughs> it's just bleed, I had bleed, three bleed. of the same type, two of the same type, and then one, but I only have three. I've still had quite a few times where two are showing up in the mm -hmm. same six. I don't know. It's 
if, if I don't care. Oh, I, at least it's I do a little bit, see. but I'm embarrassed to say that I do. It's at least something different to see. Mm-hmm. And I actually think I'm starting to shift my thought on the, the whole having them all just randomized because it kills the look. Normally I have like a look to yeah, the build, yeah. like in my build. And when you have just random portals, it's not always the greatest Yep. Look, so I'm not, I'm not really sure if I'm going to keep it or not. For now, I'm keeping it just because it's fun to see old ones that I have, like my prophecy yeah. one. Yeah. Like just some of the ones that I've just not seen in forever is pretty fun. Yep. So you have a note here about PoE2 predictions. And I should have colored the screen because I don't have a clue what you're talking about. So what do we got, Ty? What's what's with PoE2? Well, <laughs> I think. Remember Wait, how hold I Hold on, hold on. Why? This is beasts. Didn't you bring this up last? Oh, no, it's freaking pirates. <laughs> it was pirates last time. See, that's oh, a God. dream. For I me to have to that minion one and I was pirates. like, yeah, he is actually insane. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Pirates? Pirates is my dream. But yeah. I think that so okay, so what what, 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 what so Path of Exile 2 is coming out with 19 new ascendancies, right? And then they have the old ones and how whatever direction they go, I doubt the only necromancer, right, or the only guardian buffer style is going to be in the PoE 1 ascendancies, right? Sure. Uh, they're probably going to have like That'd their guardian version, but it does different types of buffs, maybe like a curse guardian or something. I don't mm-hmm. know. And then they're probably going to have a different type of minion mancer on the other side, if that's even a word. But it'll have different focuses on different types of minions, things like that. So my prediction, though, especially seeing some of the screenshots they had from the actual Exalcon convention, I think a type of beast that'll be coming out or not. Sorry, a type of minion that's going to be coming out is beasts, you know, like, I don't know tigers or boars or like different like animal style jaguars Ooh, what a creative idea yeah there was so, something about jaguars already in it oh well yeah because the ship shifting as well but i think beasts will be a type shape of shifting what did i say shifting shift shaping shaf- shift shaping i don't even know how you came up with that one <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so you're you're calling out beasts well uh, yeah i think it makes sense considering what they showed but it also is a natural They'll have like a natural beast section. I thought you were going to say a natural progression. Like it just makes sense. Like we're going from zombies to pirates <laughs> to beasts. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> anyway, no, that's that's what I think. I want pirates. Yeah. It'll probably be beasts, but I'd be happy with pirates. Cool. Arr. Anyway, I don't have any predictions. I'm already I'm already halfway answering your next question. I have none. I have no guesses. I have no thoughts about POE2. I can barely plan out my build for an upcoming league until the day before patch notes come out or the day patch notes come out. There's no way I could make a guess as to Path of Exile 2. I just wouldn't be able to. That's funny. No, I I, I absolutely love thinking about the kind of stuff that they're going to do. I get really excited for it. And it's going to be very stressful when they start announcing, like they said that they're going to like kind of revamp armor, going to change all the levels, things like that, unless I, maybe I misunderstood them. They're coming out with what was that picture that they had where they said that was actually going to be a weapon. It was like a spear or a halberd that was in one of the pictures mm. at ExileCon. I do remember something, yeah. You know, and but they don't have item types without a specific focus that makes them unique. Not like a unique item, but a unique point. Like even when it comes to sure. a difference between one handed swords. OK, well, some have a higher top the- damage with a really low base damage. Some are in the middle but they have a real a much higher crit chance right mm-hmm. they have the exact same thing the difference between scepters and wands right one can deal one one is available for melee attacks one's just for casting type of thing so it's interesting when they start adding completely new weapons it makes you think like okay well are they adding a new element to the game a new mechanic are they what is it in maybe there's something in the game that we're completely overlooking you know for the people that like to analyze what is it? <laughs> Shut your face. This is exciting. <laughs> and even though it's what, what month are we in? It's March. Oh my goodness. We still have a yeah, year to go far away. Oh, I can't come soon enough. Oh, and he even know we, I mean, it could be even longer now. But yeah. Well, COVID's probably, road, so. probably pushed it to 2021 to mm-hmm. 22. Right. I just, I, I couldn't think much about it mostly because I'm not creative enough, but also because if I actually thought of something that I, in my head was convinced like, this is it this is amazing. And then they don't do it. I mean, I don't want to turn into one of those turds on Reddit. You didn't build what I want. I'm not playing. Ah, 
No, nah, you won't. We trust anyway. this company. Even if they do stuff we disagree with, You've you and I for trust way it. too long. There's no way I could stop playing now. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. It's not green. Definitely should be green. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's your fault. <laughs> in our notes, um, in our notes, we mark who's going to start with whatever subject. And I think Justin, hey, by the way, uh, by the way, on. I would like to congratulate you. Is that what you were going to say? You are going to congratulate me because you were a jerk. You were a jerk. You're going to congratulate me right now because of how awesomely laid out you this episode did a is. very good job. I told everyone last like episode that I was going to organize the show notes so that it was actually organized and we had less. I'll tell you what it I like about guide time. titles. Oh, please. It was it like six in a time. row and it, I just, it couldn't handle well, one it episode. And that was your one. fault. It was like me trying to just get all your crap out. Yeah. Well, anyway, you did a really good job. This You ended up organizing this episode and you did a fantastic job. Um, one thing that I did want to mention, though, I think I just added this note today, but I'm getting to the point like when I see somebody on Reddit and I get a little toast on my phone saying or a banner on my phone saying, hey, I'm from Reddit. Hey, I'm looking for, you know, one click builds or I'm looking for a build that doesn't use unique items like that's kind of the stuff that those the guides that I write for Path of Exile revolve around. Sure. So I'll respond to them like, hey, I don't know if these guides will interest you, but here's a link to four of my guides. Um you know, and then here are the things that you mentioned that I adhere to in my guide. So take a look. Let me know if they're interested. It's getting mm -hmm. to the point now where I'm responding to people that I've already responded to previously, like in a different league or from a post four months ago type of thing. And so they're like, actually, I've played your bills. They're really good. I'm just looking for something different now. And so oh. uh, it still doesn't hurt to put it out there, though. No, but I feel like I'm annoying more people now that I am just with self promo like I, I i'm always awkward with self promo you know what i mean like i like putting up our podcast on my guides but it feels mm -hmm. weird you know what i mean like oh, hey, the podcast yeah yeah like i put our, oh. there's a podcast section in all of my guides and so but it feels Didn't weird you say though people have found the podcast through your guides yeah and, it, and it's worked yeah. but i just i don't know like self promo i feel like it's hey look at me hey come look at me oh click subscribe do this give me money um mm. but so, yeah, anyway, it's just kind of embarrassing when you already feel awkward about self-promoting. And then it's like, actually, I've already played your guides. I'm looking for something different now. Well, I, that can't be happening that often because I have actually seen people commenting about your guides where people have asked. And it's not even you posting. Like, I've seen people say, oh, yeah, you should check out. Oh, cool. Wrecker of Days uh, builds or whatever. That's so that's encouraging. Plus, to know. if you it. don't do that. We would never be allowed to post our podcast. <laughs> That's true. No, actually, you know what? Um, I I am like fluff posting like crazy. Like every single GGG post. I'm glad they've had a lot of dev manifesto and patch notes this time around because every every single one I'm like, That's awesome. Thanks for your work. Every single time. Mm. And like I like being encouraging to them too. I doubt they care that you know, if they have three hundred of those, that I'm sure it looks good, but they're not gonna see it from me. Um or see my specific it, one, even though counts, it's there, so. but yeah, so I'm I'm doing my best to make sure that we have our what is it a ten to one ratio? We can't just sell know, promo on Reddit. We have to comment a, on a other magic people's number. It makes sense. It makes sense. Sure, I'm happy to do it. But anyway, Whatever. yeah, it feels kind of weird self promoing the same people over and over. But um, I feel if people aren't negative about it, then who cares? I had um in my guides, like whenever you write anything, not necessarily guides, but anything. And, and you promote it, whether it's a guide or it's like fan art or it's a hideout. Anytime you put out in public, Justin, you've mentioned this many times, you have to be prepared that not everyone's going to like it. Right. Sure. And, and I mean, that's just a part of life, no matter where you are, whether you're in a lineup and at McDonald's well, the Internet's a hundred times worse, though. One hundred percent. Um, and so there's some people like I have some very strict restrictions with my guide, right? Like, uh, OK, well, it has to be I, I don't care about uniques, so no uniques. You don't need any fancy gear for this or mods. They're all one button. They're, you know what I mean? The, the tree's designed so that you can go in any direction and it's going to be balanced type of thing. Like there's a lot of little things. And because it's one button, there's a lot of aspects to my builds that aren't maximized the way the general community would play, right? I don't have four skills. So I have a lot of cast and damage taken or cast while channeling as opposed mm -hmm. to just hitting four buttons four and it's all there. Hit. Yeah. Yep. And so there's a lot of people that criticize my builds and I'm, I'm used to it and that's fine. They don't read why my builds are the way they are. Okay, sure. Um, but there's certain people that it's, it, it's baffling to me. Like I get people, most people that don't like a guide that I write 
they don't say anything. Sure, right? They, they just, just pass on, one. like, okay, like, okay, that sucks. Or, wow, I wouldn't play like that. Or, I can't believe That's people how a like playing human like that. Being is. Right. Yeah. You just pass it by. Um, there are some people that find that their opinion is extremely valuable to others. And so they'll post, your guide sucks. Why on earth do you do it this way? Mm. So you respond. And I, I Why? don't, I, well, see, that's the thing. <laughs> I, for a long time, I struggled with that, but I, sure. there are a lot of new people that like the freedom of the guides that I write. And so there's a lot of new people, every league in my guides. And I don't want anyone new thinking that there's a way you're supposed to play this game. Right. Mm -hmm. Like there's an infinite amount of possibilities to play. Trial and error is a great way to learn the game efficiently. But in terms of like how big the tree is, all the gems, all the ascendancies, all the choices you have, there's not one way to play. So when one person's criticizing, I don't want new people to feel like it's not to stand up for my build per se. It's simply to show <laughs> like there's a there's a good argument as to why I'm doing it. And I want the people that are learning the game to know that there's a million different ways to play. There's not a my way or the highway. And it baffles me. So here's the thing. If you're one of those people that has an, a very important opinion, and it's important to you to tell other people that you like a build or a guide or whatever opinion, like that's great. That's fantastic. But please be nice about it. Because there's it's such a weird game to think that there's a certain way to play. Like, there are sure. 1,325 skills on the tree that can modify. And you get 113 nodes if you're going to level 90, 123 if you actually hit 100. Like there's 1,325 skills on the tree. There are 255 active, 255 active skill gems and 167 support gems. There's not one way to play. You know what I mean? And all of these gems and all of these nodes on the tree are in for an infinite amount of possibilities. So if you're an opinionated poster, post away. But remember that there's a million ways to play. And there's a lot of people that like to play a different way. And that's OK. But I want to encourage people that are new to the game to not take things to heart. Play your way. Have a crappy build. Just learn the game and have a good time. The it's, end. it's a game in the it end. Is. It's literally a game. Have some fun. It is. I I could not do what you do. I couldn't be uh, a guide writer. Like from from a business standpoint, the way we run things too is you just don't win with trolls. So nope. if somebody is a troll, yeah, you you know getting into it with them, you've already lost at that point. But I can understand where you're coming from because yeah. you don't want somebody to read it and just feel like, oh, I guess I shouldn't bother with yeah. this one. Yeah. But if it's like if it's a, a negative that's surrounded by a ton of positives, I would not be giving those turds any time. No, I, I'm just not good at that, though. Anyway, it's why I don't respond to very much like when we do our Reddit, I try and respond on there when people are chatting mm. and and on and discord, too. I like that. But if we had people that were just being like super dicks about stuff, I would not be the good person yeah. to respond to that. No, it's it's different. I've. It's hard, though, like some of my life experiences taught me you got to see past the gun. You know what I mean? Like mm. if you imagine a gun being held to you, you look past it and you see the person on the other side. They're, they're scared. They're afraid. They're, you know, like there's there's something going on. It doesn't doesn't change the, you know, the situation you're in. But mm -hmm. when you see past the gun, it, it sometimes it takes a lot because sometimes you get pretty emotional about things, even if it's just about something like a stupid guide or a stupid game. But wait, it takes a lot. It takes a lot, whether it's something that you've personally done or you're just checking something out. It takes a lot to see past the gun. But when you do that, sometimes sometimes you can change someone. Sometimes you can help them out. You never know where you can change somebody, right? So what's your plan for this week? What are you going to do in Path of Exile? Please, I'm going to get to level 100 before you, that's for sure. Are you going to actually get to endgame? Yeah, I am. I'm going to I'm going to focus you on know, it. we made a private league. One of the points was like, hey, we can play together. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that? And I'm going to do my best to not edit my filters until the private league is done. I am going through my guides and completely revamping their layout so that they're easier to find content that you're looking for. If you're double checking information, uh, that takes a lot of work, um, but I'm doing my best to ignore it until like the last month of the league. So, you know, the end of April type of thing. So doing my best. But sometimes when something's on your mind, you just you just got to do it. You know, that thing that's on your mind should be, hey, I want to get to endgame. 
it, it I'm really trying to let it be, but I, the color filters, the filters, the no, wait, the colors that, you know, they added colors to the filters and shapes. Teardrop, come on. How is that a teardrop like not perfect minutes. for accessories? Just swap it out for frick's sake. Just make, just swap a freaking color out. If for me, with a crappy memory, if I don't have a system that makes perfect sense and if it's not consistent, I am screwed. I need to have a theme in the code so it's easy to remember and fix and edit every league. So hush your mush. It's, it's, I'm, I'm, it, leveling is my priority. Gaming with you, holding hands is my priority. I, I disagree entirely. Wait, you don't want to play? Uh, I'm waiting, man. I, I'm mapping. What level are you're you? You're welcome. Anytime. Uh, not very high. Maybe 86. Not very high, please. You, I, I'm, you're twice as far as me. Well, I'm going to be triple as far as you soon. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. Yeah, this is going to be a week of mapping for me, so it's time for you to catch up. Yeah, right on. Sweet. Well, this is this has been a good episode. I think uh, I think we're pretty much wrapping it up. So, uh, just real quick, we we do have a Discord, which we have been now actually posting the link to it, which we weren't for a while. It was very secretive. <laughs> um, so it is it is public and out there. So you're anyone's welcome to hop on and join. There's no requirement except be nice. I think the only rule is don't be a dick um we have a private server a private league which you sadly could just join because we're very shortly into it and within a day be ahead of tyler uh so the link to our private league is in the discord we don't put the private league out there but you can find it as soon as you hop on the discord so if you're wanting to join feel free to join us everybody that's on our discord already you guys are awesome it's been really fun so far this league agreed very fun and I think that uh, I think that pretty much wraps up episode 19 of Forever Exiled, a Path of Exile podcast. I'm Justin, aka Tags. I'm Tyler, Wrecker of Days. Thanks a lot for joining us today. You can check out the show notes for all the links that we've talked about. Maybe we are on Twitter at Forever Exiled 82, and you can also find us online at foreverexiled.com. Catch you later. <laughs>